Okay, hi everybody. This week we're getting into raster data, which means we're going to switch from defining our data as coordinate pairs to creating matrices. Or think of a photograph, like this aerial image of um, the area around First Dam. It's, it's a set of pixels, right? It's a grid. And think of photographs that way. So rasters are basically set up exactly like a photograph. It's a grid um, where every single cell or pixel contains a value. So for a photograph, it's a color. And they're actually usually a three-band raster so that at every location there's a red value, a green value, and a blue value. But with the rasters that we're going to be looking at, it's even more simple. They're called single-band rasters, meaning that there's just one cell. It contains one pixel value, um, like elevation or slope or aspect, the direction the slope is facing. Um, yeah, it could be rainfall or solar radiation or wind speed. Um, there are a lot of uh, continuous types of data that we can store and uh, analyze as rasters. So um, here's Utah State, and the data that we give you to work with this week, it's three different data sets. We have a half meter or a 50 centimeter digital surface model. These are elevations taken at the surface. I'm going to show you that in a second. We have a 50 centimeter DEM. This is a digital elevation model. So every cell contains an elevation value. And then we have a five meter elevation model. So what does that mean? Let's look at the five meter data. So you can see the island here. Um, you can't really see the Logan River because the quality of this raster isn't very high, but you can certainly see the cliff um, that goes up to Utah State. You can see the boulevard right here. Um, you can see little kind of artifacts left over from the roads and, and different features. Um, but this is a pretty um, poor quality raster just in that the cells are rather big and um, the way it's created, it kind of creates this bubbly surface. Um, the color is being applied to the elevation model itself, the DEM. This, this range of values here represents the range in elevation values from the lowest point uh, that the square covers to the highest point that it covers. Uh, the elevations are stored almost always in meters. And that um, is independent of whatever coordinate system the data is stored in. Elevation for the cell values is independent of the coordinate system. Um, and then you'll see that there's this USU 5 meter hillshade. So this is a USU 5 meter DEM, and the USU 5 meter hillshade is what HS stands for. If I turn off the visibility of the elevations, you'll see that's where we get this three-dimensional looking landscape. And I've got the elevation data displayed semi-transparently on top of it. Um, and you do that in the Appearance tab with this uh, transparency bar here. So this is full, uh, full strength, this is half strength, and you can see that here if I switch over. You can see it's at half strength. Okay, so that's one set of data, and I've got them grouped together, uh, and I just called this group 5 meter DEM so I wouldn't get confused. I'm going to turn on the half meter DEM. This is collected using LiDAR. Look at how much crisper and clearer this image is. That's because the cells are much, much smaller, so we get a lot better um, precision with what we're mapping. It's, um, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see the banks of the Logan River very clearly. You can see where that uh, failure was. Let's see here. You can see the water lab where the trail comes together there. Uh, can you see the golf course? Yeah, you can see a little bit of the golf course here. Yeah, so interesting artifacts. Uh, the boulevard is very clear. And again, if I turn off the visibility of the elevation model and just show you the hill shade, all we do is we lose the color. Oops, that's the wrong one. This guy here. Turn off the elevation and we just see the hill shade. So all, all, the hill shade is where we get that three-dimensional look. Um, the color is only applied to the elevation. You wouldn't ever want to apply color to the hill shade. You always leave these black to white with the, light, the lightest colors for the highest values. 
Okay, now I'm going to turn on the visibility of the digital surface model. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. This is the elevation model, and it's um, been cleaned up. All of the um, so you're going to be learning about LIDAR and how LIDAR is collected, but all of the stuff sitting above the actual ground is scrubbed or cleaned off when you look at a, um, a what I call a bare earth DEM. So I'm going to turn on the surface model now, and I think you'll see a big difference. So there's a lot of stuff, and when you zoom in, you can see really clearly that it's vegetation, it's um, outbuildings, um, you can see all the campus buildings. Let's see if we can see Old Main. Yep, and look at this big shadow that's being cast by the flagpole. You can see the A Tower. Okay, so a surface model is the first, the first hit, the first return from LiDAR is bouncing off everything on the surface. And so a surface model um, is before we clean off all of this, all of these kind of surface artifacts before we go down to the bare earth. The reason we work with bare earth DEMs um, is because we're usually trying to model how water would flow in the landscape. And all of these features here are going to act like a barrier or a dam. Um, and that isn't necessarily how we want to model the surface. Um, so yeah, have some fun playing around with this. But I would recommend setting up your data the same way where you have three groups. You have the half meter surface model and its hillshade, the elevation model and its hillshade, and the five meter DEM and its hillshade. Put the elevation models above the hillshades, make them half transparent, and put the color on those. I usually put color on them when I'm demonstrating so that it's easier to keep, um, keep them separated. If they're all black to white color ramps, it gets a little confusing sometimes. So keep your hill shades black to white, put elevation, color on the elevation, and then group them so that you can turn off the visibility without having to toggle both of the visibilities of these off and on. Okay, so the whole point of this lab is to get you comfortable doing everything that I was just doing. Manipulating the data in the table of contents, getting it to draw in a way that makes sense to you, getting comfortable panning around and zooming around, and then we're going to get into some of the nitty gritties about the data sets themselves. So if we look at the properties for the elevation model, you're going to look in the source tab and you'll see here we've got raster information and it tells us the number of columns and rows. It tells us how big each pixel is. Um, that's the resolution and then the spatial reference. You're going to have to read the lab instructions this time. There's a ton of information um, included in, in the uh, instructions that you're going to need to consume. Let's zoom way in so I can show you what one pixel looks like. We need to find an area that's, that's got a lot of um, a good transition between darks and lights, and you can see that here. So these are the individual pixels that make up a half meter DEM. And if we use the measure tool, and I just try and measure planar, that's fine, distance. We're just going to get a measure of how wide one of these pixels is. And look at that. It's about a half a meter or 50 centimeters. So that's what resolution is. It tells you how big each pixel is if you measure it on the ground. Um, if we were to go to the 5 meter DEM, I'm going to zoom back in a little bit. You can see the cells are much bigger. And if I grab the measure tool again, I'm looking at the hill shade, but it doesn't matter. They're the same, same resolution. You have a five meter resolution. So the cell is five meters across. The length of the side is five meters. So resolution is not an area. Um, the other thing that I want to show you how to do, because it's a little bit tricky to write down, is how to use this explore tool. And you've used it before. But um, when you go in here, you can drop down this and it'll let you choose either the topmost layer, visible layers, selectable layers, blah, blah, blah. I tend to stick with visible layers and then I just turn off the visibility of what I don't want to see or, you know, toggle the visibility that way. But if I go in now and click somewhere on my map, it's telling me the elevation of the surface model the regular LiDAR DEM 
and the five meter DEM. So the surface model is telling me where I clicked. The elevation was 1405 meters. 1405 meters from the surface and the LIDAR elevation model and 1408 for the five meter DEM. So that's kind of interesting. That's three meters different. That's about 12 feet. That's, that's quite a bit. But think about where I clicked. I clicked right here on the boulevard. And if we look at the cell values for the five meter data set, um, they're much bigger. If we look at the half meter, they're so small you can't even see them. So the five meter data set is, is um, averaging an elevation over a larger area. So you're gonna get um, lower highs and higher lows than you would get from the surface model. And if, or the LIDAR DEM, the five meter. So if we click on the top of a building, we should see quite a difference. So the surface model now is 1469 and the regular LIDAR DEM is 1461. So nine meters different between the surface model. That's probably the height of the building. And then the five meter DEM said 1463 which is kind of averaging between them. Now that's also because this, the way that this kind of this five meter elevation model is created, um, well, we're getting too far into the weeds, but this, this type of um, elevation model is not very accurate, this five meter one. And it's not because the cell size is so big, it's because the way it's created is um, pretty erroneous. Okay, so that's, that's using the, the um, explore tool and the pop-up. If you aren't seeing what you need to see in here, just make sure you toggle this down and choose all the visible layers and then make sure that everything's visible in your table of contents. Okay, I think the last thing to remind you is that you need to be able to look up the coordinate system for these things, but rasters don't call it a coordinate system. We call it the spatial reference. So you're going to go into the source tab and use the spatial reference um, section. That's the same thing. The extent tells you the coordinates of the north, south, um, west, and east most point of that data set. Um, that helps sometimes understand the coordinate system a little bit. Um, and that's it. So have fun playing with uh, these data sets. Look around a little bit. Um, downloading DEM data is a little bit tricky. I wouldn't recommend doing that from the AGRC quite yet. Um, but um, yeah, go ahead and, and play with these and you know, see what you can see.